Welcome to Libertas video. Today we're gonna to be doing a quick tutorial showcasing how we can have a character interacting with a prop that is connected both to the hand as well as on the floor. So this was utilized in my wilderness survival review where I have my character Sophia leaning on a giant sword and her motions are driving it. However, it's still connected to the rock that was below her. Reillusion does have a lot of great tutorials on their website and on their YouTube channel. However, the one that is covering this topic was missing one crucial step for me, which resulted in a ton of trial and error to figure out what was going wrong. So hopefully if you're watching this, this is gonna save you a little bit of time going back and forth. So I'm just gonna take you through the process real quick of what I did. First things first is I'm just going to add my idol the lean branch idle motion from the wilderness survival pack right onto my character. Then I'm going to take this sword and just make it big. So you could use this with a staff, spear, giant sword, whatever you want. But for my video, all I did was really just make a, a, the sword much larger in scale. And then I lined it up with the hand. Uh, this is gonna take just a little bit of finessing to to get it there and it looks like the sword needs to be just a little bit bigger so scale it up a little bit more I'm really just looking forward it to be lined up with this hand and on the ground which it looks like it's doing of course for me the the sword just looks too big you know <laughs> so i just scaled it down a little bit on the x and the local z axis uh, so there we go so we have the big sword and we have our hero next thing you would do is you would just link this up like you would with any prop to your character so this is actually attached the way that it's set up in there but i'm going to use the link feature since it typically works out better for me especially when i'm sending things to blender so i'm just going to pick parent and select the right hand so when we play it back now we can see well, of course the hand is driving the animation but the sword is moving back and forth in space this is not what we're looking for. So to solve that and to make sure that it's attached to the ground, we're gonna be using the look at constraint. However, in order to do that, we will need to create a dummy prop. So I'm just gonna use a simple primitive shape, which is gonna be a box. I'm gonna scale it down uh, just on all axes, axes. Bring it over to the sword itself. And then I'm gonna line up that pivot point of the prop with where I want the sword to be. So let's just take a quick look, make sure it's lined up and there it is. So that's good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So in the tutorial, then they say, okay, all you have to do is take your target or your prop and pick the target of your look at constraint, select the box. And then you need to adjust your axes that you have to look at here, as well as this limitation. So what I found for this prop is you usually use Y and Y, which is gonna give you this result. Now, if you look closely, you can see well, the pummel's kind of shifting out of the hand. It's close to what we want, but not exactly what we want. We don't wanna be going back and refining this at all. And there is a better way. So that was the problem and the issue that I ran into. I'm like, well, I followed the tutorial and I'm not getting the results I need. It's really simple. All you need to do is make sure that the pivot point of this prop is actually at the hand that is driving this animation. So I'm gonna clear this out by set it, hitting set free. It's gonna bring us back to the beginning. And then what I'll do is having the prop selected, I'm gonna go down to edit pivot. And you can see that when I bring up my adjustments for it, we have it right at the cross guard, which is where I set up the prop to have its rotation point because typically when the animation is going for a sword, that's where the rotation point's gonna be. However, for this case, we're gonna put it up right at the end of the pummel where it connects with the hand. And that looks good. So I'll unselect edit pivot. We're gonna go back to our look at constraint, pick target, select the box. Now you'll see one other issue. This is also brought up in the tutorial, but Again, looks really good. Now we have it connected to the hand, but there is just a little bit of sliding with the sword. It's not actually connected to that center of the box. Real simple solution for that is within the look at where we it is 
you know, selecting the target. We're just going to go in here and we're going to go to the root of it, which is called box zero. And now our prop is connected to the floor. So for your final render, you could hide this. And you can now see that we have this proper animation exactly the way we want it. The hand is driving the sword. The tip of the sword is still connected to the ground in a solitary position, and we're good to go. Now, what I like to do is I like to just bake these down, typically by going up to create to animation and flatten all motions with constraints. So that's going to bake this sword down into having that specific animation. So if you're done with the animation, I just find that that works out very well for me because I send all my animations out to Blender for final rendering. And so that's just been beneficial for me. Otherwise, sometimes those constraints can kind of get all funky inside of Blender. So this has just been a, a good solution for me over the past couple of months. So hopefully that helps you. Hopefully that gets you on your journey of animating this type of animation where the hand is connected to the prop, but then the prop is also connected to the floor you know, a lot faster than it took me to figure this out by trial and error. So hopefully this has been helpful. Again, my name is Eric from Libertas Video, and we'll see you in the next one.